the topic, Tom and I suggested it. Uh, it was Tom's idea to say, you know, let's talk about passing. It's sort of the, as I call it, the neglected skill. And before I turn it over to everybody, because you're all experts at it, um, I begin with stick length, stick grip, the object that controls the puck. If you learn how to hold a stick of a proper length, then comes the job of handling a puck and feeling it, moving with it and passing it is much easier. And that's all I have to offer. We, I call it the right start. If you don't get a right start, hey, they'll still pass. They'll still carry it, shoot it. But the likelihood of the success ratio, a pass completion, making good passes, let alone receiving them, is going to be far less. So that's really all I wanted to say because I'm the fundamentalist here. And uh, Mike, I'm curious. You've been working, um, you know, in hockey and also in another object sport that requires the handling of an object and sharing it. Take us through what you think has helped you the most with passing. Yeah, so, I mean, you're obviously right about the stick, stick length, the type of stick. You know, obviously, you don't want your, you don't want to teach, your, teach a kid out of, you know, the, the dad's trying to get their, get the most out of his uh, $280 stick, you know, and, you know, don't, that doesn't cut it down or, <laughs> or just tries to use an old stick. But I think you're right. I mean, just stick length. And I mean, one of the things, I think one of the things that's, for, that I've seen that's kind of disappeared is, you know, a player's understanding of a lie. And, you know, where that stick is supposed to be placed on their body and then picking out the right stick. I think it's just it's all become more of a marketing piece where I'm going to get the same same stick as, you know, Connor McDavid and not the stick that's right for me. So I don't know, that's one piece that I work with. And I think, you know, on the other side of that, the stuff I work with um, with the floor ball, um, what I found the most is the best way that I, I've been teaching stick handling. And we've had. You know, Cole Caulfield, who's an NHL, uh, Trevor Zegeris, um, you know, all the all these kids and all these forget about all the Swedes and the Finns that use floorball sticks, you know, basically growing up, uh, you know, all the time with them. It's it, I found that the best way for me to teach passing and stick handling and puck control is 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 especially with the modern kid today is teaching cadence like it's there's a rhythm to handling the puck. There's a rhythm to working your upper body and lower body and everything kind of working together and, and not having this, uh, you know, stationary static kind of teaching of, of the passing. I, I, I've really gotten into a lot more movement and, and, you know, even playing music with the kids and teaching them how to stick handling pass and getting rhythms in their heads seems to really be been successful for me. Mike, that's really, really neat <clears throat> what you said, the idea of rhythm and rhythm's natural. It's feeling and it's your entire body. And one word you mentioned, I know Tom Malloy, he really alerted me to it. And that was the lie of the stick. And um, I wonder, Tom, if you could speak to that. Uh, first of all, stick length for the listeners in my mind. Top of the chest bone in skates is the scientific biomechanical starting point. And the top hand grip, bury the knob with a V on the narrow part of the shaft and your bottom hand soft and violin kind of grip with your fingers, not your palm. So Tom, can you talk about the lie of the stick a little bit? Well, I think, uh... If, if the lie is too high or if the stick is too long, you know, then often the puck, the front half of the stick is kind of off the ice and the puck goes under it or, you know, hits a little bit of the stick. So <coughs> I'll have the kids uh, look at the tape on the stick and if their heel is all worn and nothing's worn, you know, in the middle or the front, then 
you know, if the stick length is right, then they have the wrong lie. Often it's just a stick is way too long for them. And, uh, you know, so I think it, it's important there because, you know, the shorter the stick, like Gordy Howe used to use a really short stick, but he used a lie seven. And he's sticking out with puck almost in his feet, you know, and then some guys, you know, you, I like a longer or a lower. I like a live four because the way I skate, but nobody should skate like that. So, <laughs> <coughs> so it's well, important to the right lie and the right length for sure. Now, Tom, I'm going to talk about one drill I saw you run. And for all the listeners here, uh, I'm not sure at what age you would do this, Tom, but you did it, I believe, with the U18s. Uh, players were passing to one another from blue line to blue line. And it was a saucer pass. It had to touch down on the mid line, the red line. And that wrist roll, the handling of the puck, the spinning of the puck, the flattening of the puck, that just amazed me when you did that. And it's something that I've watched so many practices this year. And that was the feel and the spin and the loft and the landing. That just absolutely amazed me at how they got it because they practiced it deliberately. And yeah, it's a, I, I, I can't remember who the coach was. Uh, somebody helping me coach and he said, Whenever you're teaching a saucer pass, have them tell them where the puck should land. You know, like if if you're open and I give you a saucer, but I land it way past you, you know, you're not going to get it. So we start standing still and, you know, just get that, you know, like like throwing a Frisbee. Your top hand is going across, so you're rolling the puck from the heel kind of the middle. And then uh, after they kind of get that, then they skate back and forth, maybe to the top of the circle, up to the blue line and pass. So they're doing it while they're skating, and it's a it's a pretty good sequence to uh, practice a, a saucer pass. Yeah. And with now with all the teaching with sticks in the passing lanes, it's a, I think it's a really really important skill to be able to sauce the puck and have it land flat. Because if you get it in the toe, you all know what happens: the puck bounces all over the place, right? So it's got to land flat as well. Yep. And even on the ordinary pass, you really important to start, you know, to go from the back of the stick and roll it towards the front so that it's a nice flat pass and not because when you get it in the front half of the stick, it's wobbling all over too. And then the pass receiver has to settle it down before they can do anything. So flat <coughs> passes are really important. Before I, I turn it over to Hal, because Hal, you've, You've written a book on it years ago, I'm sure, and played with it so, so much. Um, I've, similar to you in Canada, I, I was sort of responsible for the right start to fundamental skills. And that's why I started where I did, because that was, you, you've got to begin w with the the object you're, you're holding, and then you've got to work on that feel that kinesthetic feel of this puck on your blade and i i'm not sure what age that happens but if you let them play and get a feel it may be more effective than trying to do things deliberately which i've done all my life but hell i wonder if you can share some of your thoughts before we get a little further into the advanced parts of this uh, and I, I'll talk about an email I received about from Al Ramsey in Boston with his U12 team, first year U13s. Amazing passing. But Al, can you share some of your things for the listeners? Yeah, sure. Um, let's see here. Um, you know, I'm, I've got I've got a U12 team right now, which is an in our lexicon here, it's an A team, which would be the top group in our in our program age level, uh, top skill level, and they're very low skilled. Um, this whole we've got about five years worth of kids that, for some reason or another, 
nobody actually really taught them how to skate and or handle handle a puck. First thing we did was in the first practice, uh, one of my assistant coaches brought a brought a saw. We cut all their sticks down, and um, we told them we were going to do that. And a couple of them didn't like it, but you know we we went from there. Um, so we focused a lot on skating and trying to play the game a little bit in the last couple of months, but now we're really getting into the passing. And I think that sheet I sent you guys, this is IHF. Uh, let's see, 90% of the games played away from the puck. Puck transit, uh, passing and receiving the puck is the most used technique in the game. So the thing I find so interesting is at, at this level, and I haven't coached at this level for a number of years, is number one, they, they want to make big, long passes. And, and, you know, and most of these kids only weigh 70. I mean, they, get, you know, they get pipe cleaners, not pipes in, the, in their sleeves. And, um, and they flip it off the toe of the blade. And so we've had to go back and sort of, number one, get them to make the easy pass, not the hard pass. Um, I also have a couple of boys on my team. They're twins. I have two sets of twins on the team. But the first year twins are, um, I, I was talking to them the other day. I go, how, how tall are you guys? Well, we're a little over four feet tall. <laughs> we're playing against kids that are six feet tall. And I've come to the conclusion that when they're on the wing, they don't catch the puck in games. And I don't think they want to, right? Because they're afraid. They're afraid of getting pounded. And even though we don't have officially have body checking in the U.S., there's plenty of it going on. And um, so we've we've really had to work on on getting them to make you know make the easy pass, not the hard, not to make the hard one. The other thing I've asked them, I said, we might try it today if I get if I get a little irritated with them. Um, is that if, if every time a puck hits your stick and it bounces away and you have to get down and do 10 push-ups, do you think you're going to catch it? And they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> and they will, because I've done this before. They, they don't want to do the push-ups. They'll, they'll catch. So I think it's a matter of getting them to focus on that skill. That's why we do skating. And we just focus on skating. Because when we get into... Multi, what we would call multitasking, you know, the human brain doesn't multitask very well. And it, it focuses on, like when you're competing, you're, you're focused really on surviving physically and not getting knocked down. And these other skills, if you don't have them laid in, it's like learning to drive a car. You know, the first, the first few times are pretty tough. Uh, especially if you started with a manual transition, transmission. But after a little bit of practice, you can do it and you can talk and text and do all sorts of stuff and you arrive at your destination, hopefully, and you haven't even had to think. So you've got uh, a, uh, you know, a, a, not a front of the mind, it's down subconscious mastery of skill that you don't have to think about doing. But with younger players, they have to think about it. And I think we have to help them and put them into uh, on a regular basis, put them in a space where they, all they're thinking about is their passing skills. Um, the other thing I noticed with our kids, a lot of these kids, they like to stick handle a ton. Uh, you know, and stick handling is way overrated. And they, and they do it with both hands rather than the top hand. I'm trying to get them to loosen up the bottom hand <coughs> and drive, drive it with the... Um, uh, with, with the top end and, and just kind of steer a little bit with the bottom hand. We used a drill, I think I got it from one of you guys, uh, maybe probably Tom. Um, it's the one hand catch, catch the puck with one hand. But it's actually easier. A lot of times it's much easier because the stick gives a little bit more. And so we run a couple drills where they have to catch the puck or enter back in with one hand. <coughs> They're exchanging pucks and neutral ice, going back and scoring. So, you know, we average about three, three practice sessions a week, and they're half ice most of the time. 
and I was assistant coach, and I think, man, we we need we need eight or nine hours a week to get these kids up to speed. But you know, it it is what it is. Um, they they always need us. Uh, you know, there's a kid. Uh, there's a kid in northern Minnesota that uh, went and played at he's at Chihuahua in BCHL, and he's back playing high school now. And that kid can drop saucer passes perfectly all day long. I mean, I've never seen a high school kid in Minnesota that had that kind of passing skill. And of course, he gets a lot of assists out of it, and so on and so forth. And it's something to aspire to, I guess. Um, now, if you don't mind me, uh, yeah, go ahead. Interrupt you. I'm just going to throw this out before I go to Peter, who has had his hand up. Uh, when I was doing hockey schools, handling a puck stationary, I just used to say, butter the bread, spread the jam. Those mm -hmm. little simple catch words got that roll of the wrist, the spin, the feel, the kinesthetic sense, oh. which the team tends to be missing because they're, they're, some coaches are teaching, and I'm quite surprised at how well kids do it. No dust passing, or I should say, no dust slap passing. No. So there's that line. And I just thought I would share, spread the, you know, butter the bread, spread the jam. Peter, go ahead. Yeah, before, uh, before I get going, is anyone else looking at Rick's screen? Is, is he at a disco? What's going on over there? <laughs> I don't know. 